Okay, floor is yours, my friend, and thank you, you. For listening. Thank you, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, we are. Um, I'm. I'm being honored to be among you, and um, uh, and happy to present this uh, small uh, presentation. Uh, we are going to talk about the behavioral finance and the basis for behavioral finance, which is um, quite new in 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 um, uh, the domain of finance, uh, and then. There are some um, discussion between behavioral economics and behavioral finance and the impact that this behavioral finance have had on investment decisions are really important. Then we are going to move to the market sentiment. At the end, we are going to talk about um, the biases and hopefully for the next time that Ali Reza is inviting me, I'm going to, if he's inviting me, I'm going to present the biases, few biases that I'm going to present at the end. Now, uh, okay, here we go. Um, do we have an efficient market? What, what is an efficient market? Uh, an efficient market is a market that informationally efficient, which means a change in the matrix or the domain of a company quickly and correctly impact the price of the share. So if I have a financial instrument and that financial instrument is subject to change in a set of news, a piece of news, then the market decides quickly and reacts quickly and correctly and incorporate that piece of news into the value of the share. In an informationally efficient market, the price of security observed at any time are based on correct and quick evaluation of all information available at that time. Therefore, when we are looking at the market, when we find the price of, of a financial instrument, the price of financial instrument reflects everything that everyone knows in the market. And there is no change in the price if the, a piece of information um, emerge. <clears throat> um, so therefore, in an efficient market, price immediately and fully reflect available information. Um, it has started in 1965, uh, basically, with, with uh, Fama um, in, in his uh, PhD thesis. And he was talking about um, a random walk hypothesis, which then after 1965, in 19, uh, in, uh, Paul Samuelson, uh, provide the first formal um, economic argument on market efficiency. Then in 1970, um, Fama itself formulates the efficient market hypothesis, which suggests that at any given time, price fully reflects all available market information. And then we have the, the work, the great work of Malico in, in 1992, which says market efficiency with respect to an information set implies that it is impossible to make profit by trading on the basis of that information set. In English, if we have a piece of news that just emerged, and as soon as we turn to the market to use that piece of information to set a position, the price that we see in the market has already reflected correctly and quickly. And the price that we see has incorporated that piece of information and reflect that piece of information. Having said that, there are usually two sets of um, view, as we can see in, in many, many different literature in finance, like um, 
on a capitalist structure with Modigliani and Miller school of thought and the traditional view with the dividend policy school of thought, which is again Modigliani and Miller and the, um, the signaling or, or, or um, 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 bird in hand uh, uh, view of dividend policy. Exactly when we are looking at the um, um, random work or non random work, there are two arguments in front of each other. So, in the random work argument, what we, we can see in, in, in the book that, uh, that Malkiel wrote is that the price movements in securities are unpredictable. Investor cannot consistently outperform the market. And if they outperform the market, it is their chance, not based on the um, mathematical um, uh, proven probability. Uh, fundamental or technical analysis to, to time the market is a waste of time. So we shouldn't try to time the market. We shouldn't find the point that, that the market is going to turn or, or find anything like this, going down, going up. All of those are a um, waste of time. And the investor would be better off buying and holding an index fund. So what they use, the language they use, and the way they are looking at the market, they look at the market like a drunk person, that you cannot fully understand their movement. So when you look at the drunk person, you don't know if they are going to fall to the front or to the back or to the sides. That's exactly how they are looking at, at the market, a drunk person. Whereas in the other school of thought, which is a, a non-random work, they, they believe that based on empirical evidence, valuable information can be extracted from security prices. What does it mean? If we run an advanced, uh, an, an advanced econometrics analysis to test the randomness of security price, we can find useful insight for technical analysis and chartists, which is, which is absolutely different from the technical analysis that, that every person who enters to the market are being introduced to. This is a very sophisticated um, method of looking at the probabilities of the past 100, 150 years and trying to understand the next movement of the market. So we have two a school of thought, which worth looking at. Um, there are some um, doubters of, of efficiency which are um, absolutely right. They say, if there are efficiencies in the market, why these are happening? And, and we, it, they, they are very famous case studies. If, if you just Google them, you can find them. Uh, for example, uh, Peter Lynch, <laughs> this is a very interesting one that elementary school children beat professionals. A uh, few years ago, again, we had an elementary school uh, child who got, uh, who, who became a, a millionaire uh, by trading the pink shit and, and other, other forms of, of the doubter of efficiency of the market. Um, a, a very famous work of uh, Professor Robert Schiller, who won the Nobel Prize, um, and uh, there is another book of him that 
No, that's that's irrational exuberance. I was just looking at it. So it's, it's here. Uh, there is a, a newer a, a newer book which is uh, narrative economics of, for uh, from from Robert Schiller that I I didn't put it there, but but this is what he won the the Nobel Prize, um, and and these are these are the famous work, um, especially this one. Uh, which is which is very interesting, and 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 the rest of them, they are they are really interesting work, uh, uh, and and as I have mentioned, he won the Nobel Prize um, on on the matter of efficiency and non-efficiency. Uh, also, um, the work of Richard Thaler. Again, I I would advise everyone who are interested in this kind of. Uh, literature to read his work and also watching his Nobel acceptance um, speech is really, really helpful. I always um, ask my student to look at it. Uh, he has another book which is called Nudge. If I can find it by the end, I will show it to you. I don't know where is my car. Oh, where are you, Nudge? Yeah, uh, he, he, th that's, that's another book by, by him and also by um, um, Sunstein, uh, who just recently wrote another famous book. So these are these are famous people in in the in the field of behavioral finance, um, and and his his question is is really a very interesting question. Can the market add market add and subtract? So basically, is there any rational be behind the behavior of the of the market? Um, and also Herr Schaeffrin with, with behavioral corporate finance, uh, beyond uh, greed and fear, which is very famous, or behavioral, uh, a behavioral approach to asset pricing. Um, he, he imposed very interesting question. And finally, with um, uh, Andre uh, Schlaffer, who, who wrote about inefficient market. So as you can see, there are different ways to explain the why these doubters are happening. And the decision is, is by the person who wants to enter to see if it's a random walk or a non-random walk down the Wall Street. So I showed you both sides. Now let's look at the efficient market hypothesis itself. Uh, there are three pillars of the efficient market hypothesis. The fundamental arguments are, are, are as follows. So investors are rational and value security rationally, which these two, I, I hope you appreciate that, that these two are two different things, being rational and processing information in a rational way are, are two different matter. Um, even though some investors are irrational, their trades are random and therefore cancel each other, so offset each other, cancel each other, without affecting the prices. So if I made a mistake, because it's a zero-sum game, someone in the market is ready, which goes to the third one, but someone in the market is ready and they know what they are doing. This is the... This is the assumption they know what they are doing and therefore they are going to um, cancel my my bad uh, movement in pricing the, the the security and any opportunities arising from irrationality will be swiftly arbitrage away so based on these three we formulate what we call efficient market hypothesis, which is known as, as random walk, a drunk person, a person, market is a person whose next movement is not known. And what they, what they say is that in three forms, price fully reflects available information. And those three forms are weak, semi-strong, and a strong form of the market. And if you want to even believe in 
a non-random walk, which is the counter um, hypothesis to the random walk, it is important to know what is your the market that you are you are acting in and you are entering in. And it's very famous to know, it's very important to know that in the weak form of the market, if I have the price up to here, the price only reflects the past sets of information. Whereas if I have add or deduct, for example, let's say the price is 90, this 90 is only incorporate the past information. Whereas if the market is semi-strong, it is not only the past that incorporate the past information that incorporated the um, to the price, but when it's semi-strong, it might go up or down by, for example, five, because past and present available information incorporate into the price. And finally, the last sets of form of the market is the strong form, which, for example, it might go up or down. But I'm, I'm just picking the numbers. There is, there is no pattern in the market, in the number. Let me just increase this to 10. And, and from, and as you can see, if it's, if it's a strong uh, form, then I have all information, public and private. Therefore, if the market is the strong form, there is, there is no insider trading can be happening in that market. So the diagram circles represent the amount of information. So past plus present and plus private. So if I have all three incorporating in the price, then there is no way that I can beat the market by looking at the pattern, by finding the pattern. So if it's a strong form of the market, then the pattern that I see already incorporates all information. And if there is a new piece of information coming out, then it's already impacted and, and affected the price. So know that the weak form covers the least amount of information and the strong form covers all information. Also note that each successive form includes the previous one. So it's, that's why I use, I use plus here, past plus present, which means past and present in the semi-strong, past, present, and private in the strong form. For example, markets which are operating on 24-7 basis, markets who are involved all around the globe, are usually a strong form. Let me give you one very, very brave example. Uh, Tuesday, November 2016, I don't remember the exact date, but if, if you go back, the, the, the um, election between Clinton, Hillary Clinton and uh, Donald Trump, I look at one chart in the morning in, in the UK, 9 a.m., uh, before before the, the pools are open in US, I look at one chart and I predicted that the next president with, with good confidence would be Mr. Donald Trump. And everyone in my class was like laughing at me with only one graph. I looked at dollar versus peso, Mexican peso. And I have seen the exact behavior that the price of peso has exactly like dollar versus pound when we had the June election for, uh, not election, referendum for leaving the EU. So because it was a strong form, I assume that when, when, the, when the peso versus dollar is starting going down, market knows something, market knows better. The sentiment of the market dictates who is going to be the next president of the United States. It's really, really um, um, very brave thing to say. 
but I'm going to say it because I'm going to use it in my next uh, slides. The differences between efficiency and inefficiency in the market is about anticipated or unanticipated event. So first look at an unanticipated event based on the efficient market hypothesis. When something happened at the time of T, the price would increase or decrease. This is the increase. It could be decreased immediately to this new P. So from P0, it goes to P1. And there is no room for any, any um, swinging or, or taking profit. Because at the time of the news, quickly, it reflects in the price. Whereas in an un unanticipated event, in an efficient market, we would see that the price would go to P1 from P0 with a time lag. So you have time here to enter to the market but the point here is we don't know if it stops at P1, goes up and goes down and up and down until it reaches the P1 that it's supposed to be. So there are inertia at the point of P P1. So I'm looking at the price versus time. If the event is an anticipated event, we know something is going to happen. Then based on an efficient market, the price starts going up at T minus one. And when it comes to the event, the price has already reached P1. And there is no room after that. So if we know something is going to happen at T zero, the price starts going up and up or down and down until it reaches the, the, the balance, the equilibrium, basically. And then it, it levels up. Whereas if the market is inefficient, if the market that we are working at is inefficient, then the price starts going up at the time of event that is, that is anticipated. It, has, it, it, it hasn't reached the P1 level. So at T0, it hasn't reached the P, P1 because it takes again time until T1. So I'll put T minus one. You, you get the idea. It starts going up. It doesn't reach the, 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 the set of the price that, that puts it in on equilibrium and it goes even higher. Again, we don't know how long it's going to go up or down. Therefore, what we are going to look at are two examples far away from 2004, one of them, very famous classic in example. And the other one is for in, in 2007. And there are reasons I, I, I selected these, these two. In 2004, uh, Krispy Kreme, my wife, is, is a very, very big fan of Krispy Kreme. I don't like them, but uh, they, they, they sell donuts. They, um, the donut retailer earned 2.4 million or 4 cents a share in the third quarter of October, 31st of October, 2004. That's down from net income of 14.5 million or 23 cents a share in, year, in, in the year earlier. So last year it was 14.5, this year went down to 2.4 million. And it was, this, this four cent was well below the market analysts expectation of EPS. When we look at the share price, the share price should reflect, should reflect on, on 
all of these. And what we have seen is the, the company lost $1.25 per share, which is about 11% went down to 10.25 in pre-market trading in INET following the report. And then fortunately or unfortunately, the company posted a net loss of 3 million or, or, or 5 cents minus 5 cents a share. So EPS of minus 5 cents. Uh, but that's, that's the story. What I want to look at is this one. Look at the behavior of the market. We already knew that it is going to happen, but we didn't know the, how big it is going to, to be. So we anticipated 13 cents. It turned out 4 cents. The behavior of the market is the drop. But if I look at the average, look at the average of the changes. So it behaves like it was going down correctly with our anticipation, but suddenly, because it was an un unexpected, then the movement are starting going up and down. The other one was a famous 18th of September 2007, everyone was anticipating the, um, the, the rate cut of, of, of 50 basis point, which is, which is 0.5% uh, to 4.75. The market had been anticipating a reduction of 25 basis points. So everyone was, was anticipating 25 basis points. Suddenly, the um, uh, Federal Reserve Committee decided to cut it by 50 basis points. Look at the change in the market. Again, it was going down. Then it, is start, it, it jumps up. Uh, this is this is um, Dow Jones, and then you can see the up and down and up and down, and it went up again. You can see the the reaction of the Fed surprise here again, and it took only it took only few hours to adjust. So we have an efficient market hypothesis. But in reality, we will see that the market is not efficient in, in both Dow Jones and in the, in the value of, of a share price back in 2004, back in 2007. But why? Why markets are inefficient? Uh, Ali Reza, should we stop here and, and take some questions and then continue, or do you want me to finish it? It's entirely up to you. Entirely uh, up to you. Okay, guys, do you want to raise your hand and then we know that if uh, Ali Reza, it's so put put so two three minutes. Uh, let's see if there is any question and then we will continue. So when there are no questions. Uh, the assumptions are only two assumptions. Uh, either no one understood anything, or I taught really well. So I hope that it's the second one. You are mimicking my word, aren't you? I mean, I always say <laughs> oh, okay. when I when there is no question, there are two things. Either I'm bloody good, <laughs> I'm bloody good. <laughs> I put it in the second or, option. Or or you have no idea what the heck I'm talking about. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. And, so I, like and, I, I, and I always intend to believe this is the first time. The first option is correct. Always. I, my assumption is the second option for myself because no one understood anything or I'm a very good lecturer. Yeah. So hopefully it's the second one. But well, one no question one I have actually. Okay. So I'm not okay. a good, good lecturer. Okay, go on. I mean, not, none of us are. <laughs> um, um, one question. Okay. Um, it is difficult to anticipate. I mean, you said about the anticipate on and unanticipate things. It's, uh, to me, there is external factor involved. I'll tell you what. In 2005, I was that time I was trading on the Forex, and I had 
a quite a large number of things. And in the matter of when the external factor, when the bombing happened in London, I lost all my asset, which was about 60, 70,000 pounds in a matter of the two hours. I mean, I was on, in the underground until I get to my office and I can turn on my computer, I lost everything. You see, there are some this, external factors which this, we do this not- This is what happened to you. Look at, look at the left-hand side. The event of um, the July 2000 and, um, was it? Five, five. five. Mm. Yeah, uh, it, it was an unanticipated. And that's why in the Forex market, which is a very efficient market, you will see a jump in, in your case, jump the price down and suddenly it's wiped out. Mm. It's so it very painful. I know, I know. It's consistent with, 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 with what I have explained here. Yeah. So you were working in a strong form of the market, an unanticipated event happened, mm. the jump is sudden. Mm. Whereas if it was inefficient, you had time to close your positions. Okay, so it's because it was, I mean, okay, I got it now. So because it was efficient market, but there was external factor which got nothing to do with the efficiency or on inefficiency of the market, that created that I didn't even have a time to close them down. Because it was efficient. Mm, that's what I'm saying. And okay. it's an un unanticipated event, then you is didn't it, have time. Is it cryptocurrency a market considered as efficient or inefficient? Crypto. Mm. <laughs> yeah. uh, crypto is crazy. And, and That's why we like it. I don't. Uh, mm. and, and that's why... <laughs> That's why it is, it is a madness. Oh, you didn't answer my question, whether it's efficient or inefficient. No, no, no. It, it is, it is um, look, um, first of all, we don't have enough information. That's the first thing. Yes. Uh, the second thing is, when you look at an unanticipated event, such as um, uh, tweet, Elon Musk tweets, Exactly. Or, or Fed, Federal Reserves. Or, or the, El Salvador. Recently. Yes, El Salvador. Yeah, the, the, yeah. The, the president of the El Salvador accepted yeah. the Bitcoin as which a payment. Is, which, which, is, which, is, which is interesting because El Salvador is, is the example of the country with issues with their legal tender because, because they, they went through dollarization. They were, they were hungry for something like this. We would see that the market jumps, but in case of El Salvador, it didn't. So sometimes it behaves like an efficient and sometimes inefficient. But don't you think El Salvador, because is the El Salvador doesn't actually, it's not the big economy to influence anything as a matter of the fact. I mean, El Salvador, I mean, in terms of the GDP, when you look at it, it's still a suffering. In terms of the contribution to the uh, market, is is a suffering. They have a, so much in corruption in the system. They are one of the corrupted uh, country in the South, South America. So they have no influence on the market. Is it just a matter of they wanted to say something? Apparently, it's some crazy person with the, you know, the backward hat. It tried to say something and, and yeah, it yeah. doesn't make any difference because they I, are I call him smart. rapper. He, yeah. he looks like a rapper, a rapper rather than, yeah. He, he looked like a rapper. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or drug um, dealer as a matter of the way. It's much but, more but to, to, to have, to have, look, it, it is, the, the reason I'm calling it difficult to spot is because um, the past, present and private information. So if we assume that the private information is for the whales that are, that are influencing the market, uh, we don't know when they are doing that. So we can't time the market. In terms of timing the market, that's why I, I would say that, um, that that crypto is a random walk. Okay. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. It it's like a drunk person. I wanted to hear to say it's efficient, but you don't say it. So what can I do? It, I can't it, force you. <laughs> no, it, it is. It is. Look, because the, the reason I'm not I'm not disclosing hundred percent is because I don't have enough evidence to support. That's but the as, first one. But as a friend, you could have supported me. At least I can sleep tonight very well with that. <laughs> I don't want you to sleep. Yeah, emotional, yeah. emotional support, my friend. <laughs> right.
<laughs> okay, let's let's move on to to um, uh, to the reasons behind market inefficiency. Um, and, uh, yeah. yeah, Salman, sorry, I think somebody got the hands up. Okay, uh, yeah. I think is Satara. Satara, do you want to say it before we move on? Uh, please move on. Uh, I ask my question at, at last. At yeah, I did. Right. Okay, okay, that's fine. fine. That's fine. Uh, okay, thank you. Let's move to to the market inefficiency. We've seen that a lot of markets are inefficient, but why? Why we we face inefficiency in the market? Uh, and, and to answer Ali Reza, I'll, I'll go back to Ali Reza's question later. But we have something called market sentiment. And I remember that one of my uh, family member from Germany called me uh, when the price of Bitcoin was 64, uh, $62,000. And he said, oh, I've got everything ready to enter to the market. And I said, hang on. Can you explain to me what is the crypto, how the blockchain works? And he went like, what? What is blockchain? I said, you want to enter to a market and you don't know what's going on in that market. And that is usually when, when the, the, the point of maximum financial risk happening. And at that point, I started telling everyone that, that Bitcoin is going to go down because everyone is entering to that market. And that could be due to the, the FOMO, which I'll come back to. Or you can go and search what is FOMO, F-O-M-O. But what is happening is we are feeling all of these feelings up to this point. And this is what, what most of the people active in the crypto market, are, they, they were feeling since 2017, 18. And it was, it was like thrill and excitement. And when you look at the clubhouse, they are having different rooms that they used to with 1,000 or 2,000 participants. And, and when, we, when we were having rooms in, in, in clubhouse, it was like few people coming in and then they, they leave at the end. We were like five or six people talking with each other. But they enter because of fear of missing out from us. And at that point, I knew that the market is, is, is going down. This is exactly like a very famous um, um, physician who, who driving around with his chauffeur and his chauffeur knew, uh, sorry, sorry, it's a different story. It was, it was like um, uh, Kennedy father, if I'm not wrong, who went and who, who talked to a person who were, who were shining his, his shoes. And then he said, if you have a lot of money, what would you do with that money? And he was, he, the, the, the shoe shiner was, was really ex excited and said, oh, I would have gone and put my money in the financial market. And then when he got to the office, I, I think you have all heard this um, um, story from Warren Buffett, which is wrong. It was it was Kennedy, uh, John F. Kennedy, father. Uh, that that is the maximum point of financial risk. And then when the market starts going down, and I have seen every single one of these in a lot of crypto active people that they, they started to deny, then they went to fear, depression, panic. Uh, and, 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 and most of them exit the market here. So I bet if I didn't talk to my family member in Germany who lives in Germany, he would have entered because of the FOMO, because of the, of the peer pressure, because of the... Um, um, the what what is going on and what has been going on he would have entered to the market here and exit the market here so he would have seen this bit of the market and still when it went down to around 50 from, from 62, 63, uh, Bitcoin went down to 50. A lot of people, they, they believe and they put their 
their laser eyes and everything. It is, it is just a setback. It's not gonna happen for the long time. It will come back and we know what happened to the market. Um, a very famous day of, of 1987, um, uh, the day after the, the, the Black um, Monday, um, 19th of October, we have um, mixed messages on um, newspapers. So we have positive and we have negative words coming out. They, they didn't know what to do. Um, and, and you can see that they, are, they were comparing 1987 to 1929. You, you will still see every, um, um, every October, I, I looked at the market and every October we have a fear of the, the October effect. We have October effect, September effect, which I'm going to talk about. But the newspapers are, are, on, the, of, of, are, are on the knife when they, they are writing. So they try to, to balance their, their wording. Let's look at some of the market sentiment and what is going on in the, in the market. 1993, 2004, 2008, 2011, and 2005, it is really interesting, especially this one. <laughs> um, I, if I'm not wrong, it was, it was uh, the, um, the Japanese uh, one. Uh, this person, if I'm not wrong, or South Korean, they found that um, the weather, the cloud in the sky or, or sunshine has impact on the stock market. So on a sunny days, the stock market are usually returning positive, whereas in the cloudy days, it, the, the, the stock return is negative. So the weather has an impact on the stock market, but how? Through the mood of the investor, through the behavior of investor, and it, it will impact the, the return of the market. Next, that is interesting. We know that lunar cycle has impact on people. On, sorry, not on people, on the sea and on, on animals. We know that it is related to tides and animal behavior and some natural uh, phenomena. But interestingly, lunar cycle has an impact on the stock return. So around two weeks around the full moon, we have, a, we have lower return than two weeks around the new moon. There is no explanation for this rather than the market sentiment, what, rather than the mood of the investors. Um, sports sentiment, you, you, you don't believe, but we know that, for example, the heart attacks are going up um, during the sports sentiment. Uh, we know that there are increase in homicide. We know that riots are happening. Uh, suicide among um, the Canadian rise significantly if the Mon Montreal uh, Canadians are eliminated early from the uh, Stanley Cup playoff. But then we've, we have two studies here. Um, in 2003 and 2002, one study shows that the stock market effect of, of soccer in England or football in England, uh, there, is, there is an effect. Say if the, the, the national team wins, FTSE 100 would go up. And if they lose, FTSE 100 would go down. But then when they run run this on, on, on rugby match in New Zealand, they, they found no effect. How do they do that? Let me just show you quickly. They are going to have um, a null hypothesis, an alternative hypothesis. In the null hypothesis, they said the stock market are unaffected by the outcome of the soccer match. Why? Because we are rational. There is no relation between soccer match or football match and market. So there should not be any impact. Whereas 
the alternative hypothesis is that wins lead to positive stock market reaction and losses leads to negative reaction. Why? Because we are motivated by finding from our psychology and we are having different moods and different um, way of expressing it. And one expression is in the market. And we can see that we are not that rational. So alternative hypothesis is being uh, approved with the win of less and losses on the higher impact. So are we rational? And another one is the impact of religion in, in the financial market. Uh, in 2004, there was an, a study on, on uh, uh, Hashanah and Yom Kippur, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, St. Patrick's Day on S&P 500, and it shows a significant impact. Um, the, the other ones are, are for um, Islamic centers, um, the effect of holy days of Feast of Ramadan, and Feast of Sacrifice on a stock return at Istanbul Stock Exchange or uh, Ramadan on Karachi Stock Exchange or the effect of Ramadan on Saudi Stock Exchange, Tadawal. Um, and and it, it, is, it is explained fully in uh, Muhammad al-Isis, uh, the Muslim holidays of Ramadan and Ashura. On, on daily return and trading volume of 17 Muslim financial markets showed this. So the first 10 days of Ramadan has a lower return and it, it goes up to the last 10 days of Ramadan. Also, when you look at towards the end of Ramadan on 27th, which, which most of the Islamic countries are preparing for, for, the, um, for the Eid, the, the return goes, goes significantly higher. They didn't stop there. If you look at the odd days and even days, the return of odd days are higher than the return of even days. And also, interestingly, Ashura in, in Muslim countries, regardless of the subdivision of the religion, it has a significant impact. And I was presenting this uh, for, for some people in, in Persian Gulf, um, from, from Persian Gulf a few, few months ago. And they were Iranian living in, in those countries. And they said, oh, why Ashura? I don't think Ashura. And I went and I checked the main um, Muhammad al-Isis paper. And I found that he, he mentioned directly and clearly that Ashura has an impact. And then they came back and emailed me a few weeks later. And they said, oh, we talked to people around here and they, they don't do anything for Ashura, but they know Ashura as, as a day that they don't want to trade. And it was very interesting to me. That's the latest finding. So again, there is no explanation. There is no fundamental changes in the market. What is happening is the result of what you see here. But where, where does it come from? I, from? If you didn't get anything which I have said during this few, uh, almost one hour. This, um, and herding an information cascade plays a big role in the financial market. And when Ali Reza was asking about cryptocurrency, I believe that um, the fear of missing out impact the herd behavior and the herd behavior pushes the people into selling or into buying behavior. And you can see from the narrative economics, which I showed you in, in the beginning, um, Schiller mentioned in his, his amazing book, he, he mentioned that 
is it the 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 economics that shape the the stories or is it the stories that shape the economy and that is what he was he was on going on and on and on in his famous book um and it was it was on the phone someone was saying i've got a stock here that could really excel and then the really excel turn into sell and the behavior the herd behavior is happening and then someone someone got really angry look at this one here and says that this is madness i can't take it anymore goodbye and then the next person's here boy and boy and boy and then look at the herd behavior and you can compare this exactly with what happened in cryptocurrency <clears throat> And there is a, there is an example. For example, if you if you go, I remember when we used to go to Farahzad or here. If you go to Brick Lane, um, a lot of um, waiter or waitresses are coming out of the uh, restaurant and trying to catch a few the few first customers. And what is suggested here is at the end of the day, if you go through the, 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 the books of, of those restaurants, you would find that whoever captures the first customers are usually ending up selling more than the other restaurant. Because when you go out, you look at the, you look at the restaurant and you tend to 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 go to the restaurant which has more people sitting in and this is this is our behavior this is our herd behavior oh there are more people there that is exactly applying on the p -E ratio so the p -E ratio is a result of the herd behavior the price pushes up the earning goes up or down doesn't matter because the p -E ratio is very much sensitive to the price and and it comes from the herd behavior finally a very famous um, halloween effect which i'm still waiting this 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 year to see last year we didn't have halloween effect last year was was an exceptional year uh, but the sentiment in the market is that between November to April period, the return of the market is higher than, than May-October period. So that's why it is called selling May and go away and come back in October. Uh, it is also known as selling May effect, which is a calendar effect. It, it, it categorizes into the calendar effect. And if you look at the anomaly in the market, we can even see the anomaly in the behavior of our stock market uh, before and after uh, election. So before election, apart from two years in the past, uh, before election and after election, 100 years after or before the election, the behavior of the market are different. And it is really interesting to see. Um, they were, they, it, it is basically the work of um, uh, Jacobson with, with different people. And they, they had issue with data mining, sample selection biases, uh, a statistical problem, um, um out outliers like like last year as i mentioned and economic significance like war or or something changing but the assumption if excess returns are not significantly different from zeros between these two periods or even negative it makes no sense for risk averse investor to invest in the stock market during summer so sell in may go away and come back in October. What they found is interesting. Based on 33,348 monthly returns and overall hist historical market risk premium of 3.7% generated from winter return. This number from, from November to April, this number from in, in the summer, May to October, was significantly lower and it is basically lower by 1.17 percent 
in 47 out of 66 market. In another word, 46 out of 66 market shows that between May to October, the market return is even lower than the risk free. But why, why all of these are happening? The behavioral finance, and I, I have um, Daniel Crosby book that I, that, that, that I read, uh, very, very famous, and I, and I encourage you to look at his, his work, The Behavioral Investor, um, trying to explain the reasoning behind it, not from mathematical point of view, not from fundamental point of view, but, but based on the behavioral finance and what impacts our decision. So it is, it is hard not to think of the stock market as a person. Um, in, in the, in, it has moods that can turn from uh, irritable to, to euphoric, um, um, uh, euphoric. It can also react um, hastily, hastily uh, on a one day and make amends next day. Behavioral finance theories provide a couple of key concepts based on the biases and contribute to irrational financial decision making. And those biases are usually these biases, which I think it has, it has um, uh, Ferdowsi Pu uh, translated this book into Persian, The Art of Thinking Clearly. Uh, to Persian language. There is one other book, if I can find it and if I can reach it. Yeah, this one. This one is also being, being translated. You are not so smart. And the art of thinking clearly. Um, we, we always try to read from these two books in our meetings, in our gatherings. Um, we are trying to understand the basic biases cognitive and emotional biases that 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 are being created being created in us such as anchoring mental accounting confirmation bias uh, hindsight bias gambler fallacy uh, if you if you look at the the gambler by by dostoevsky uh, that book is really really nice when i was little i, I used to read that book. Uh, herd behavior, we, we, we discussed the herd behavior. We've seen that, that what we hear and how we are passing this, uh, this um, information to another people are creating a herd behavior. Uh, overconfidence, uh, I've seen this a lot in a lot of uh, investors and traders. Overreaction, um, availability heuristic, that is what, what most of people are, are looking for. They are looking for signals. They are looking for shortcuts. Availability heuristic. And I've seen this a lot in, in Iranian market, not, not less in, in the other markets. But if you don't have the fundamental knowledge, you are looking for, for kind of shortcuts. And finally, uh, prospect theory by by Kahneman. Um, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you so much for listening. I I was yeah exactly. I I, I put the the last twenty minutes for for any questions and answers. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, um, Salmon, for the very insightful thing. I've got one thing. I I also need to say about the Iranian market. You see, uh, for some reason or other, I don't understand. Um, people got into the financial market. Now they lost, and they are blaming government for the. They need the money back from that. I mean, this is a, exactly the inefficiency of the market we are talking about, which is government intervention, isn't it? Government intervention creates inefficiency in any market. In, a, in in economy, we teach that. One of the meaning of the inefficiency in market means government intervention. So I don't understand why we, as an Iranian, we need to get involved in every single market. When the dollar is going up, we're going, to we're going to buy. When we're coming down, we're going to sell. We got to the market. If you don't know anything about market, what is the point of the getting to the market? And now they're blaming 
each other for the government push them. I mean, that's, I mean, in, in here we had the same situation, didn't we? We always people getting, there is expression guys in, in the financial element. I mean, Salman knows better than me. He said 90% of people get in the market are loser. Only 10% are winner. Yeah. And those 10% is always, they are people who knows the market. And the 90%, and those 10% earning from those 90% who are losing. So it is our decision. I mean, uh, that's, I think is very important. If you don't know any market, I think you should not get into that one. Even if it's very, very uh, lucrative or looks lucrative for you guys. Right. Uh, let me let me give you a quick um, a story based on this. Uh, do you remember my German family member who called me and asked me uh, what I think? He didn't ask me directly, but he said I'm going to enter to to crypto market. Do you remember that story? Mm. My answer, I replied with this. I didn't give you the full story. I, I kept the full story for 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 our second um, presentation. But my answer to him was that, oh, that was that. It is really exciting, really good. Thank you. I, I hope the best for you. And to be honest, I was thinking to, um, of of quitting my job. And he went like, "What do you mean quitting your job? You're you're a lecturer." I said, "Yeah, yeah. I want to go to." Um, uh, to install toilet and he was he was he he i i, I mean, feel like he was he was perplexed yeah. and then and then he said why toilet do you know anything about toilet i said yeah i, I go there and i sorry that's that's not a nice example but I, that's that's the real example that i use i said yeah i go and and put the flash down and then it, it flashes out so i want to go into that business and he was like you don't know anything about it. I said, exactly. You don't know anything about cryptocurrency and you want to enter. I don't know anything about toilet. And when I said I want to go to the toilet business, you knew that I don't know anything about it. But if something looks looks lucrative, as you mentioned, it, it, it is more like a FOMO. Because everyone else, everyone has a friend who has a friend who has a friend that that got really rich and they know what they are doing well, we are we are and 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 also availability heuristic so we are looking for shortcut everyone wants to get rich in one night yeah but well, as an iranian we always looking for the shortcut isn't it yeah well, always we, not, not we, not we iranian. want with the it's... minimum but well, mostly iranian with the minimum most people we want to be a mil minimum in the matter of the night well that's that's exactly the, yeah yeah exactly um, Setara. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, your talks. They were uh, really useful. Uh, so after all we said today, do we even have an efficient market? Because uh, people are emotional and act as their emotions. And with so is there any efficient market? And uh, so I think uh, because of this, uh, we can trust fundamental and uh, long-term, uh, not long-term, meet investments in markets, and we can do scalping and uh, short-time uh, trading by the candles, and you know. <laughs> okay. Um... You, you, you just pointed to my, to my pain. Uh, are, are you a technical analyst yourself? Uh, I'm educating myself right now. You I can't educating. call myself, yeah. Okay, and I believe you are devoted to Elliot and, and those um, Fibonacci's and those, uh, you're counting the Elliot's and price action and all of those, is that correct? Yes, and yes, I'm uh, studying price action. Price and you action. end up and you end up buying the sheep as well. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't yeah. bought anything yet. I'm still okay. educating. Yeah. On the paper, it, it seems like you you make a lot of money on your paper account. But when it comes to your biases, when it comes to you, the actual money, your behavior would be absolutely different. And I've seen this in a lot of traders. A lot of traders on the paper account, they are really successful. And, and most of the people whom you are learning from are showing you 
big return. I made five thousand pounds, five thousand dollar, two thousand dollar today, three thousand dollar. Just ask them to show you the real account that they have, and 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 ask them to share with you the the history of their trade. And then if they showed you the history of their trade, then I I I just throw out all my books and I'll give you all my money to trade for me. And we can go half and half. The market is a zero sum game. You gain, someone lose. You lose, someone gain. Gain. There is no such a thing as free free lunch in the market, and that's that's what Fama is is saying. Now, the answer that I have for you is that depending on the market that you are you are investing in, it could be weak or semi strong. Having said that. There are a lot of big firms who are waiting for any, um, I don't know, cop and handle to appear, or any any turning point of Fibonacci sixty eight to appear. But, but there is no fundamental correct basis for any of those that works in the market. Unless you go and provide me with with one hundred years of a study to show that there is fifty one percent chance that the next candle is going to go up or down, then there is no point doing any of those. Does that make sense? Where I'm going? At? So yes. so 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 a lot of people on the paper they make a lot of money when it comes to their actual and and I and I think you want to enter to um, forex. That's what I see in your eyes, because <laughs> because most of the price action people are are learning price action to enter to to the forex market. Uh, start with a little bit of money. Do not put all your money and all your your investment, and and see how long it takes until you are being liquidated. So be careful. Sure. Thank you for your advice. All right. Uh, okay. Alireza. Okay. Anybody else got any question? Before Doctor, we're going to lose our Doctor Eravani because he's got another club to attend sometime soon. I think at four o'clock, isn't there? Yeah. We we are going to read. Um, if if you if you follow follow um, if you're on Clubhouse, there is a club called Behavioral Finance, and we are reading uh, the Art of Thinking Clearly, translated to Persian language, Hunar uh, Shafaf and Shidan, by um, by by uh, Rolf. Um, th this is the book, but I think Ferdosipur translated it into Persian language um so we are reading them um i think it's it's good to to know the biases that we have especially if you want to enter to um trade uh can you please uh, uh write it in the chat box so yeah uh, Thank honare, you. Honare uh, yeah. no i mean your uh, clubhouse name oh, behavioral finance yeah yeah sure uh, let me just thank you. I have the behavioral finance somewhere here. Yeah, behavioral finance. That's that's the club name. Um, I think in, in 50 minutes we are going to have um, our fifth or sixth um, session. Okay, uh, I'm, right. I'm with you, Ali Reza. Thank you. I think there are no questions. Thank you very much, Salman, for a very pleasure. interesting thing. And I will definitely invite you for the second one, as well as hopefully a session we can do on the crypto so I can make me millionaire. <laughs> I wish. Look, I, um, have been, I, have been in, I have been in this business for a very long time, but I want you to make me millionaire. In one night, definitely. Only one night. No more um, than that. Uh, Otherwise, I'm, me... I'm going to hang you by my hands. <laughs> exactly. I know. But... Uh, uh, you know, m most of the economists are are really, um, um, how can I put it in the right way? Crazy. They, they, 
yeah, thank you for that. I didn't want to disclose that. It's between us. Yeah. But uh, but what I want to say is 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 this: uh, Kruger is known for his um, nonsenses. Uh, for example, when he was asked about internet, he said internet is in the best. It's like a fax machine. Or or he he made a comment about crisis. We are usually not really good in predicting. Um, yeah. If if yeah, and and he um, uh, the only one who made a lot of money, I think, was Keynes. If I'm not wrong, the only was a very good the one. only problem with us is we always, if you look at this, and we always ten years behind. Exactly. exactly. From I mean, we are good at prediction, but we are ten years always behind after everybody else. Specifically, yeah. technology based. We are ten years because we are so much of the downside after everything. We think about too much of the downside of everything. Yeah, exactly. We're not positive about the future of anything, and mm -hmm. that's why. I mean, I don't call myself economist anyway, but I teach. I, I have a studied economy and I teach economics, but I'm not economist. That's why I'm less crazy than many other people. <laughs> but I think we are very <laughs> much behind after everybody else. Anyway. Thank you very exactly. much, Salman. It was lovely having you. Thank you, my friend. And Thank I'll talk you. To Thanks you for inviting. Thank you, Mr. Right. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers. Bye bye. Bye everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Okay, guys. I